Ariasso, the absurd hero, if you like, learns of the death of his mother and has a rather unusually impassive reaction to it. Goes off to the cinema, goes to the beach with his girlfriend, sleeps with his girlfriend. And all this around the funeral of the mother, which he reacts to rather quietly. Then we have the climactic episode when Merceau has been with his rather suspect and seedy friend, Raymond, and Raymond has had an altercation with Arabs on the beach about a woman and looks as though he's about to shoot an Arab. Merceau stops him. He says, you can't shoot without provocation. You can't shoot that Arab. And he takes the gun from him, and that's indeed why he has a gun. Goes for a walk on the beach later. Extraordinary passage, in fact, very lyrical passage when Merceau shoots the Arab because Camus manages to get the reader to think, until the readers step back from the text anyway, that it's not really Merceau's fault for shooting. It's because of the sun. There's a lot of heat. There's the sun glinting on the knife that the Arab's holding. And Merceau shoots almost as a reflex reaction. It says in French, la gâchette a cédé, the trigger gave way. And then shoots four more times into the dead body. So that's the, the high point of the book and the low point of the book, really, and the end of part one. And the second part is the trial, a real fiasco and parody of a trial, when what seems to be on trial is Merceau's character, and uh, he's condemned to death. There's um, a lot of reflection suddenly in Merceau, who's been a rather unreflective character, and it ends with Merceau waiting for his execution. link between l'étranger, uh, the outsider, and the myth of Sisyphus is, is, in a sense, at the level of experience. One of the things which he stresses in, in the essay is precisely that one learns the truth about the absurd through everyday experience, banal experience, something that can hit you on the street corner. And that awakening is, I think, what is, is embodied in the, in the outsider. I think, in a sense, the the banality um, of, of routine existence, for example, that kind of thing, the the social pantomime, you know, the 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 pastiche one has of, of things like marriage, funerals, wakes, court cases. In fact, we talked about the parody there. Um, the inadequacy of language, you know, the fact that language, the term love, doesn't cover anything that Merceau understands. Um, the term guilt, doesn't cover what the court tries to impose in the second half. So language is as fundamentally inadequate. Um, but underneath it all, the, the awakening, the lucidity that finally um, either is articulated towards the end of the novel, if indeed one thinks that he's not lucid at the outset, or you know, maybe, maybe he is lucid at the outset, there's a critical argument there, but in a sense, it's, it's, coming, it's coming to an awareness, as he says himself, the chaplain at the end of the story. We're all condemned to death. We're all going to face the guillotine. It's just a question of waking up to the fact and living out the consequences. And the consequences, that's what he always said about the metacisif, the metacisif is a starting point because the consequences of that lucidity about the fact that we're all mortal is that you learn to live in the present, for the here and now, you live in terms of intensity and immediacy and spontaneity. Marceau is alone. He's walking along this hot midday beach. This is quite significant. And he comes across one of the Arab men that he's seen earlier with his, I think, rather ghastly friend, Raymond the Pimp. He's got Raymond's gun about him. And as he approaches this... Arab, who's still sitting where he left him, he feels for the gun in his pocket. He keeps walking towards the Arab, and then... The Arab pulled out his knife and raised it towards me in the sun. The light flashed off the steel and it was as if a long gleaming blade was thrust deep into my forehead. At that very moment, the sweat that had gathered on my eyebrows suddenly rushed down into my eyes, blinding me with a warm heavy veil of salt and tears. All I could feel was the sun crashing like symbols against my forehead and the knife, a burning sword, hovering above me. Its red-hot blade tore through my eyelashes to pierce my aching eyes. It was then that everything started to sway. 
The sea heaved a heavy, scorching sigh. The sky seemed to split apart from end to end to pour its fire down upon me. My whole body tensed as I gripped the gun more tightly. It set off the trigger. Well, that killing is the central event in Albert Camus' novel The Outsider, the book we're talking about this month here on BBC World Book Club. And it's prompted perhaps the question. Uh, I'm Khmer so shoot the Arab. More to the point, why four times? It may be that he reacted senselessly to the unbearable heat, but this on its own is unsatisfactory. Why is an act of violence followed by an afterthought of further violence? Is it perhaps that only something violent that rings with finality can make Marceau fully grasp the pointlessness of everything? The murder comes, in a certain sense, out of the blank whiteness of the sun. The narrator talks about the sun at the time he commits the murder, almost as if the sun itself was the reason for committing it. And uh, in a certain sense, I think it's it was just that, the overpowering physicality of the place that kind of pushed mental processes aside and made murder, but also maybe, you know, a lot of other things possible. It's possible that Merceau's indifference is really repressed rage at the human condition, and this would explain the four extra shots that he fires at the Arab once he has killed him. And who writes, um, I read L'Etranger a few years ago in school in a unit on absurdism. My friend read the synopsis of the book aloud and then remarked, a senseless murder, that's the best kind. Would you consider the famous murder on the beach a senseless act? So, uh, David Walker, if I can ask you first, we've had suggestions that actually it's the heat, it's uh, just totally senseless. Uh, what what is well, why it, why does Merceau commit? This I think well, one of the keys to, to to this is 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 the way in which this particular passage is written. Uh, I think everybody notices that this is the point at which the language becomes intense. It becomes figurative. Uh, images and metaphors of knives and uh, swords cutting into Merceau, and in a sense, in a sense, it's a sort of self defence against the attack from the sun and the heat. And the chapter in question has been building up to this kind of thing right from the beginning because he starts the day feeling off colour, feeling uh, oppressed by the heat, and we've seen that he is susceptible physically, physiologically, to the torment of being out in the heat. So there's a sense in which it's arranged in that way, so that it's a kind of reflex reaction, simply a physiological reflex reaction, to the situation where the knife flashes in the sun, the sunlight cuts into his eyes, and he uh, uh, reflex, pulls on the trigger, and, and the gun goes off. But... Uh, there is another sort of tradition on which the passage is drawing, and it's, it's in the passage just before Merceau shoots, where he says, uh, to the effect, it occurred to me that one might shoot or not shoot. In other words, it could be seen to be that other feature of French culture, the gratuitous act. It's a thing that happened but could just as easily not have happened. And that is a greater challenge than many of the other interpretations because it leaves us with no way of interpreting it. If it's just by chance, he, he did it, but he might just as easily not have done it, as he says to the chaplain in the second part of the novel. So I think there are these two traditions. One, if you like, is the anthropomorphic one, nature becoming a hostile force, driving man to commit murder, and the other one, chance, random events, which defy explanation. And, and I favour the one that defies explanation, actually. It makes it more interesting. Arab. of violence against Arabs by Europeans going on a lot. I mean, he think he said to somebody in the 50s, never would a European man have been condemned to death for killing an Arab. Mm -hmm. So he knew he was not writing a realistic fiction. And it's quite interesting that he took these real trials and he did something very, very different by having Merceau condemned to death, not for killing the Arab, because the Arab is fairly unimportant in the courtroom, but for not crying at his mother's funeral. Right. So it was really, it was the hypocrisy of the judicial system that interested him. Is there something about the overbearing uh, presence and, and heat of that Algerian sun, especially in, in those summer months where it can be like, up, gets up to 40 degrees, I mean, centigrade we're talking here and, and that um, it, it can cancel out black out so many other 
mm-hmm. elements in your psyche that, that it blacks out the shadow, doesn't yeah. it? When there's too much sun, you can't see your shadow side. Right. I I was working on the the biography of the stranger and studying the exchanges that Camus had with Andre Malraux, and Malraux said, "You need to rewrite the murder scene." because we don't feel the sun. We need to feel the sun glinting on the knife. Oh, Malraux told him that. Malraux, who was just a genius editor for this book. And Camus went back, and you can see in the manuscript where he rewrote that scene. I think it's one of the most beautiful descriptions of the destructive power of sunlight in all of literature. So the sun is not just his friend. That's what makes it interesting. Sure. Why does (laughs) Marceau kill... Kill the Arab, and many of them just re- reproducing what the text says. And it, the, the cliched answer is, "A cause du soleil." It's because of the sun, which it's not a satisfactory answer on the one hand, but it's a perfectly precise one on the other. So, actually, I didn't know that Malraux was the one who uh, encouraged him to go back and give the sun a much more prominent role in the cause, if you want to call it causality. Because it's not really uh, causal in a, in a legal sense, but there is a suggestion that had the sun uh, been a bit less overbearing and intense, that this um, moment would not have come about. You know, you're really asking a question that's so against Camus' own thinking, because he wanted to construct a book where there is no causality. He believed in the absurd, and in the absurd, the world, it's not Sartre's psychological definition of the absurd. It's a definition of the absurd where the world is out there, you know, incontrovertible. You can't get around the world's forces, so you're just up against its absurdity. Now, if you wanted to construct causality, yeah. He says the son made him do it, partly because he just wants to be a jerk with the examining magistrate. You could say he did it because he had to leave the house while the women were cleaning up. He's with Masson and his friends. So you could say it's it's some sort of a hatred of women that makes him do it. You could say it's the fault of the Moorish woman. Uh, and Raymond, Raymond the pimp who gets him into all this trouble in the first place. I mean, there's a whole chain of events that's both arbitrary and fatal that leads to the murder. And that's what makes it such a compelling book. No, I agree. And causality there is not, again, as I said, it's not the technical causality. There, there are circumstances uh, and Camus was really interested in what he called the tragedy of circumstances. Certainly agree that there's not any psychological causality. There's there's not a, a probing of psychology. But when I read that scene, I find that Camus is very deliberate about describing the way time seems to come to a standstill in a very threatening way and that everything is going to be engulfed in, in a kind of... Uh, suspension of uh, this dead end that time is is, is precipitating into. And I think he can do that better than anybody. Yeah. Stop time. Stop time. But mm-hmm. that, And maybe firing a revolver is the only way to get time moving again. I don't know. It, it, it's, there is something strange because he fires once. And then three and more then times. And then he fires four more times. Four more. And he says, and it was like five blows that I struck, five knocks on the door of unhappiness. It's one of the only metaphors in the whole novel. Yeah, Yeah, so if we were to put Merceau on trial as readers rather than as in the courtroom, I think those extra four shots uh, are very damning evidence for a certain kind of intentional Absolutely, absolutely. It's not manslaughter. It's, yeah. yeah premeditated murder. It's a very alienated character, you know, this Merceau. Uh, he seems to not be very affected either by his mother's death or his uh, relationship with Marie, that there's uh, this kind of indifference that seems to run throughout his um, his way of being in the world. No? And, uh, of course, the one question that every French school child is asked about Pourquoi a-t-il tué l'Arabe? Why does Merceau on a beach uh, at a noon hour, uh, early afternoon hours in this blazing sunshine, 
Uh, and wh why does he kill the Arab in the famous um, climactic scene of that novel? Uh, first, I should say here that uh, several different interpretations can be uh, uh, presented uh, of this marvelous novel. So please do keep in mind that uh, this is only my own subjective interpretation. Uh, I, I am not certain, first, that Merceau is totally indifferent to the mother or or to uh, Mary, rather he tries to distance himself from the mute and silent love of the mother. He, th there is a disconnection in Meursault between the way he uses uh, language, parole, uh, vocabulary, and what he, he, he feels in himself and is unable to put words on his most important uh, personal feeling. He probably he kills the Arab because he feels threatened by the Arab civilization which is all around him and he does not really understand him. He does not know how to talk with them and he sees them as a threat and he, he has a, a reflex de défense, a mechanism of defending himself when he, he is not really threatened and he kills the Arab. You can probably see this murder as uh, exemplary of the misunderstanding between the, the Pienoirs, the people from European origin in Algeria, and the native Arab civilization. Well, let me, let me say that that's, that it's a possible interpretation, but I'll tell you why I resist it. Okay. I resist it because, first, it gives an explanation. Yes. In a psychological or socio-political uh, uh, explanation. And in my reading of, uh, of the book, the whole point of that uh, act is that it's supposed to be gratuitous and that it doesn't have an explanation, that there's some un underlying absurdity to it. Uh, and that if we were able, actually, to give an answer as you did, then, uh, then it would lose this opacity of enigma that, that, that I think Camus was very committed to maintaining, no? Do you agree with that? Yes, uh, I agree with you, and, and yet at the same time, uh, I maintain my interpretation because I think may, maybe it's a, a professional deformation, but I think the role uh, of the interpreter is to provide uh, explanation, and I do agree with you that the text is opaque and there is uh, a confrontation to uh, a gesture which is totally absurd, but at the same time, it calls constantly for interpretation. Yeah. That might explain also part of the success of this book. It, sure. it, it is calling for an interpretation. I provide one knowing that it is only subjective and I do not take it as an absolute explanation. Yeah.